Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you so you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. What's up, everybody? It's Andy Smith, your host with the most, and today's book look is featuring Gil Kane, The Art of Comics by Daniel Herman. Uh, this book is from Herma's Press, uh, I don't know if they're still around. They did a number of books that I own, and uh, they're really, really nice books. Uh, they This was another guy who had a booth in San Diego who I made sure I always went by. But like I said, I'm not sure if they're still around. Uh, Gil Kane, if you know me, you know he's one of my favorite artists. Uh, so let's go through this book. Um, not sure if it's still available. Of course, if it is, I will post the link in the description below or at least uh, an eBay link or something. Uh, let's see when this sucker came out. I want to say 20 years ago. Uh, do, 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 2001, 22 years ago right there. So uh, Gil made it. Well, Gil passed maybe in 2000. I don't remember. Anyhow, it's 186 pages, as you can see. Uh Goes through Gil Kane's life. I love self-portraits. I love when artists do self-portraits like this. Uh, if you got my first volume, volume 1.2, uh, First Man, uh, it starts off with me doing kind of an ode to Joe Kubert, where I'm sitting at my drawing table introducing the book and such. Uh, check that out. Uh, you can get it as part of the Core Draft campaign. Um, don't let the volume 1.2 fool you. It is volume one. It's too long of a story to go into on why I did 1.2, but suffice it to say, I should have just called it volume one. Anyhow, nice little introduction talking about Gil. Uh, this book is chock full of art. Gil is just, you know, I used to say it was Neil Adams was my favorite Green Lantern artist, but I really have to say it was Gil. And if you look at those, uh, 75 issues of Green Lantern, mostly drawn by Gil. There were only a few fill-ins in the batch. Um, you'll see when Neil Adams took over, and Neil even said he loved Gil Kane's Green Lantern, you'll see a lot of that deep perspective that Neil Adams did with the flying figures of Green Lantern he got from Gil. One of my favorite covers here, um, Murphy Anderson inking over Gill. I did like Murphy's inks over Gill. Um, uh, obviously I loved it when John Romita Sr. worked over Gill because I thought their styles complemented each other greatly. Uh, I will say my favorite inker over Gill is himself, to be honest. I, I know he used pens and stuff and they faded, but I just love it. Uh, short chapters, comic art, the first generation, uh, Reed Crandall, uh, was an influence on Gill. Uh, if you don't know who Reed Crandall is, I definitely recommend checking him out. Uh, tomorrow's publishing actually put out a book on Reed Crandall. I'll have to do a book look through for you guys. He's another, uh, he's a golden age artist. Just fantastic. Him, a guy named Lou Fine, really great work. Uh, in fact, here's Lou Fine right here, drawing Stormy Foster from Hit Comics. Uh, I wish I had the knowledge of these guys in the 80s, because I could have picked these books up a lot cheaper. So this just kind of goes into the history and such. 
and uh, Gill's influences and whatnot. Gill is an artist whose work I look at and uh, I really think is an original in regards to the way he constructs a figure. You don't look at Gill's work and really go, oh, he's like this guy. You know, like, I'll use me as a perfect example. When I first started out, you looked at my stuff, you're like, oh, he's a big part Sears fan. And I was, but we also shared a studio and he was a mentor of mine. You know, you look at Brett Booth and you go, oh, big Jim Lee fan. You look at Nick Bradshaw and you go, oh my God, Art Adams had a baby and his name was Nick Bradshaw. Um, Brian Hitch, when he first started, big Alan Davis. Now Brian is more Kevin Nolan. But uh, with Gil, you could see where he got his figure construction from, which was George Bridgman and uh, some Bern Hogarth. So love this stuff. Noel Sickles here, uh, Milton Kniff. All early influences, of course, you know, Alex Raymond, you can't go wrong. So this book gives a nice little history lesson as well. Beautiful Alex Raymond stuff. I just, I would love to imagine Alex Raymond drawing Superman or Bern Hogarth, who, yes, his drawing books, people gripe about, but... Because, you know, I've heard the biggest thing I've heard is, oh, Bern Hogarth, if you look at his drawing books, nobody looks like that. They all look like they don't have skin. Well, yeah, because they're how to draw books. But when you look at Bern's Tarzan stuff, I mean, this stuff came out in the 40s. This is 1948. This is, this would have been fantastic on a monthly basis in comic books. So, anyhow, this is about Gil Kane. Gil Kane's real name, Eli Katz, born in 1926, like a lot of the greats, Joe Kubert, John Buscema, just a great time. Uh, I don't know if there's color stuff in this book or not. I guess we'll find out as we move on. Uh, let's see, covers the Pep Comics 38, Pep Comics 39. Uh, Kane did not draw these covers, but contributed to the interior art. That's cool. I've never seen any of the interior stuff he did during that time period. I don't know if they show it in this book. Like I said, literally for this book look, I always say I just pull a, com a book, comic, a book off my shelf that I haven't looked at in a while. Uh, and I had an idea of what I was going to do, but I happened to look down, see this book and was like, I wouldn't mind revisiting that book. And that's why we're doing this one as a book look. Uh, Kane didn't draw these covers either. It would have been nice. I'm sure you could have found interiors for these books to show some of Gil's uh, interior work. Same with these. You know, it's like, it's a book about Gil Kane. Uh, it's cool to be able to go, oh, that's something I want to go try and find. But, um, you know, I'd like to see the interior work that he did. Gil Kane and friends in the army. Love these guys. They serve their country. Uh, here we go. Honing his craft. Uh, these are some... He went under pseudonyms including Penn Star, Scott Edward, Gil Stack, and then uh, Gil Kane. Uh, a sample of a proposed daily strip entitled Whiphorn drawn by Kane in the 40s, mid-40s. Um, you can easily see... I almost want to say that's later than that, but I'll take it uh, because he knows, the author knows. Look at the beautiful construction of this horse and just the, the head construction. I mean, that's such a hard angle to draw. He just nails it. Just so well done. Uh, this is an interior page from All-Star Western, number 59 in 1951. Uh, Gil Kane pencils, he's guessing Bernard Sachs on inks. Uh, Bernard Sachs was a great artist in his own right, but his inks, he was another guy. He inked Mike Sikowski on some Justice Leagues. He was a guy who back then you could really look at and tell his inking style. Uh, here's a cover by Gil. Uh, now that you can definitely tell is early Gil Kane. And some more uh, Western stuff, which... I got to say, I don't know how much this Western stuff goes for. I should look it up because it would be nice to own an early Western book. 
Uh, if anybody out there loves me enough and would like to uh, buy me a copy of Green Lantern Number 1 by Gil Kane. Uh, no, I know his first appearance is Showcase, I think 22, but I like Green Lantern Number 1. So, you know, it's a little bit cheaper. So if anybody wants to gift me that, I would not uh, say no. I might even give you a piece of artwork in return. I have a reprint of it, but I really want the real thing. Uh, this was inked by Bernard. I like Bernard's inks on Gill because it really solidifies it. Bernard was almost a precursor to Joe Sinnott in regards to his inking, very slick and clean. Uh, splash page, Mystery in Space, number 30. Uh, March 1955, so Gil was not even 30 years old yet. Very nice. You can see in the face, the construction, it's Gil. Uh, I did a video about a year or so ago. I have a whole book of his uh, layouts for an issue of Green Lantern, and it's just the figure construction. I, I recommend going back and finding it because... Uh, if you want to see just great figure construction, uh, that that shows it. Now, this is interior page right over here on the left from Sensation Comics. Alex Toth Pencil, Cyberry Inks. Uh, and in here, Strange Adventures, Alex Toth Pencil, Cyberry Inks. Toth was a great influence on other comic artists in second generation, including Kane. Uh... I mean, that's cool. It's a Gil Kane book, though. I'd much rather see Gil Kane. Don't get me wrong. I love Alex Toth. I've got a number of his books. Um, if there is a specific book look on an artist you'd like to see, uh, you know, name an artist in the comments. And if I have a book about them, I will do a book look on it for you guys. Uh, or if you know a specific title of a book, I might own it to be able to do it as well. Uh, this Johnny Quick, this is not Gil. Um, this is, uh, let's see, above, splash page for Adventure Comics 144, Dan Barry Pencils and Inks. Um, this is Johnny Quick. I really wish this was in color. This is such a gorgeous page right here, the movement and stuff. So this must be talking about influences. Again, here, of course, is Wally Wood. You can just tell by the, the figure drawing and the, the, the science fiction tech and stuff. Adventure Comics 144. Guys, I'm going to have to look that up, see if I can find it. Um, uh, let's see. These are early Gil Kane covers, inked by Joe Giella, uh, fantastic artist. Uh, Bernard Sachs inked some of these covers down here. You just don't see covers like this anymore. Here we go. Let's see if I was right. Showcase. Uh... Green Lantern Comics, looking for the rest of his life. This is how sad. It doesn't say, out of nowhere, showcase. It's too hard to read. I think it says number 22. You know, for the first appearance of a character, you wouldn't think they would do kind of a back shot. Um, but I do love that. I mean, if anybody wants to get me a showcase 22, you know, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Just saying. I appreciate you all. And here we get into superheroes. This is where I discovered uh, Gil Kane, yep, Showcase 22. Gil's costume design just uh, couldn't be beat. Such an iconic costume. Uh, even the new Green Lantern series they're doing today has this one. This costume where it cuts up like this and not onto his shoulders. I don't know why they went back to that, but I'm not complaining. Of course, it doesn't drop down trunks like this it cuts lower but that yeah, we don't do so here we go talk this this chapter talks about gill and his his work on green lantern uh it is showcase 22 beautiful work here in the background with this city um and then we have uh these great covers like <clears throat> pardon me uh this is issue four um i think this would have been great as a cover for showcase number 22. Now, obviously this was done after, so you can't see into the future, but look at that. Instead of the missile like that, it could have literally been a smaller missile coming at him and you get the nice hero shot of Green Lantern. Um, but here's what I'm talking about. These great uh, in your face foreshortened shots of uh, Green Lantern flying away or to you. 
Neil did this so much in his Green Lantern run, and he really got it from Gil. If you look at this figure construction, you can kind of see Bern Hogarth up in here in the torso and the construction of it. Gil's covers on Green Lantern always, almost always, feature just a very nice hero shot of, uh, of Green Lantern. Um, I assume they'll touch on it in this book. He also worked on one of my favorite characters, Captain Marvel, for Marvel Comics. He did three issues. Uh, those are some of my favorite issues uh, drawn by Gil. Uh, here's another great foreshortened shot, you know, really putting the character in perspective. And Neil just took it to a different level. So not taking anything away from Neil, but like I said, I was just reading this interview with Neil and Neil even said he wanted Green Lantern because uh, it was a low selling book. I think it might've been on the verge of cancellation and Neil's like, well, let me get, take a stab at it. And he did that with X-Men as well. Neil liked to try and take books and turn them around. Uh, these are from 1969. This is actually pages from Green Lantern number 69, 1969. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have this issue. Wally Wood did a fantastic job inking Gil Kane as well. Um, not a big fan of Sid Green's inks over at Gil. I thought they were just a little messy. Um, I'm pretty sure I have this issue. If I don't, I must get it because I was born in 69 and it's number 69. And I just love the number 69 for various reasons. Uh, get your head out of the gutter. He had a big role with bringing the Atom back to uh, the forefront of DC, showcase number 34. Um, towards the end of Gil's life, he did a uh, two-issue story arc with Green Lantern and the Atom that was inked by Klaus Janssen. I highly recommend getting it. Klaus is an anchor who has a very strong style, but even though his style is very strong, you can still see the penciler underneath of it, and those two issues are fantastic. And they also feature covers drawn by Gill, but painted over by Alex Ross. So that is a combination you can't go wrong with either. Uh, when Alex paints over somebody, you can totally see Alex's painting style, but the artist underneath still shines through. Um, these are just fantastic issues of the Atom here. Um, more pages from some of his, his work on the Atom. A buddy of mine in town actually owns a, a Green Lantern page that Gil did that he inked himself. And I, oh my God, I've seen the original and I just love it. Uh, Gil did hundreds of covers throughout his career. And I mean, he was banging these things out so fast that, you know, you can really tell the different anchors over them because Gil was just banging these out. Hell, they might have just been breakdowns that were inked over. I really wish this wasn't in the spread. This is one of my favorite issues. This is, let's see if it says... Uh, so this is Murphy Anderson and Gill from Detective, 1969. Here we go. Uh, Tales of Suspense, 91. Gil Kane, Joe Sennett, Inks. Two of my favorite artists working together. I have this issue. I really wish it wasn't ah, like that. So you could actually see the beautiful inks. Um, I'm looking on my bookshelf. You guys are lucky. I'm right in front of my bookshelf. Let me see. If I have, I've got this great Captain America book you guys are going to love, but the reason I'm, the reason I'm pulling it out is to see if you can see that spread, if it's in here. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, these books are fantastic. Um, Penguin Classics, great reproduction. Let's see, I don't know if there's a table count. There is, so 91. Ooh, two, oh, the fighting acrobat. I, I think that's just text. Oh, it is. I don't think they actually show that Gil Kane job. Look at that. That is a hero right there. 215. They don't. Oh, this is 218. Oh, 
they only talk about it and then they go in number 92. So unfortunately, I know I have a reprint of it somewhere. Unfortunately, it's not in that book. I'll have to, uh, God, if I don't have a reprint of it, I'll have to get one because I know I do. Anyhow, uh, right. Kane's homage to Jack Cole's Plastic Man covered a Plastic Man number one, November, December, 1966. Gil Kane pencils and inks. Uh, that's cool. I got to be honest. I totally forgot about this. Um, I'm going to have to look up to see who drew the original or who drew the book. I'm sure it would have said if Gil did the inside. I'm sure he didn't. Gil also did Hawk and Dove, another fantastic uh, series. Uh, this is from Tales to Astonish number 90, where Gil did pencils and inks himself. Gil drew some Hulk stuff. There's a great issue of the Hulk fighting the abomination. Uh, Gil did a book called Savage. His name is Savage. It was uh, supposed to be a graphic novel. Um, I think it actually came out as a magazine. He did a daily strip. Uh, oh, this is great real quick. These are his breakdowns right? So these are not full pencils. So I imagine some of his covers were probably this tight because he did so many of them. But then you can see the inks are just phenomenal right here. And he did the inks as well. More breakdowns of his work. I mean, these are breakdowns as well. Once again, just beautiful figure construction and perspective. Oh, this is nice. Really showing his figure construction. Now, this figure construction to me is very uh, uh, George Bridgman. If you don't know who George Bridgman is, uh, early 1900s artist uh, teaching how to draw the figure, highly recommend his books for figure drawing. Uh, Dave Finch is a big George Bridgman fan, and so is Jim Lee. And you can really see it in the way they draw torsos and such. Now, the funny thing is, I don't have any of this Savage stuff he did. Um, he did another book, which I'm sure they're going to touch on in here. Yep, right here, Black Mark. I do have Black Mark. Black Mark is great. It's more um, kind of like a novel with spot illustrations, a lot of spot illustrations. It's not sequential, like here, this is a page from it. So it is sequential, but there's a lot of text you can see as well. Um, Neil Adams actually inked a few pages of it. I don't know if they show those here, but uh, Gil Kane and Neil Adams is just the combination. Once again, Neil's a heavy-handed inker. However, you can still see Gil Kane shine through in his... Uh, underneath the inks that Neil did. They did a Conan job as well, which I really recommend. Um, it was in black and white. It's been reprinted in color. It's another great one. Um, this issue of Alter Ego has been reprinted. I have the reprint of it. It's from 1969. I recommend it. It's a great interview. Uh, I love this drawing of Gil. Uh, let's see. Uh, this was by Marie Severin. Just a fantastic, Marie Severin could do everything. Realistic stuff, superhero stuff, dynamic, powerful superhero stuff, humor stuff. Uh, but Jim Steranko, Joe Kubert, great issue there. Uh, I have a reprint, but it only shows, I believe, the Gil Kane interview. Captain Action, another great, it's only six issues, I think, five or six issues. I own them all uh, just because of Gil. Here we go. This is the Captain Marvel stuff. I wish they showed more, but just look at that drawing of Captain Marvel right there. Just look at that. I see drawings like this. And so an idea I had, and I, I just don't know how well it would fly, is you guys have all seen homage covers. I did one for Core Draft based on Conan number one. Uh, Aaron Lepresti's done some for Wraith of God. Clinton Helinski's done some for his book, The Superiors. I think I'd love to do a whole book where literally I just scoured some of my favorite comics and put together a whole book, uh, First Man, The Homage. And it would meet, just be me taking like this shot, making it First Man, Luke Henry back here, 
and then boom, Luke Henry here, you know, and basically just swiping for the whole book. I don't know how well it would go over. And when I say swiping, I don't mean like the core draft cover where you could look at it and you go, oh my God, that's a Conan homage, but it's, you can definitely tell it's drawn by Andy. It's not him tracing over Barry Windsor Smith. I mean, literally tracing that except with my inking style, but making it first man and doing that for like a whole book with different artists. I don't know how well it will go over. I don't know if that'd be something that people would want to see. Uh, Submariner, I wish he drew interiors of the Submariner. Unfortunately, though, he only did a lot of covers. Um, number 46, great cover. Stingray, one of my favorite characters. Guy, I like all these lame characters. Just look at the amount of covers he did. Of course, these two issues were Gwen Stacy Dies, inked by John Romita. Uh, they just did facsimile editions of these, which I bought because uh, I don't own the originals. Frank Giacoya, very close to John Romita Sr. in regards to inking style. Here we're getting into some of his Conan stuff. Uh, they might show the Neil Adams. This is great. So I got this book back when it came out, 2001. They did a facsimile edition of the Supernatural Thrillers um, featuring the Valley of the Worm. Uh, it's not Conan. It's just a barbarian type character. It's fantastic. I actually loved it so much. I went and bought uh, the actual issue in really nice shape for like 40 bucks. He drew uh, an Iron Fist story inked, inked by Dick Giordano. Dick Giordano did do inking for Marvel um, in the 70s and stuff. Not so much in the 80s, but uh, Dick inking over Gil was a treat. Dick actually came back to Marvel in the 90s, inking some Thor over John Romita Jr., which were just uh, beautiful. Power Warlock, uh, he did the first six issues, I think. Pencils, I bought those because they're beautiful. Growing up, I always loved this cover. I mean, who didn't? Giant Size X-Men number one, uh, inked by Dave Cockrum. Uh, I wish Gil would have drawn a full issue of X-Men, but this is what I'm saying. This is how tight I think Gil penciled most of his covers for Marvel. I don't know that for a fact, so, you know, correct me in the comments if you know more, but um, this is all an inker needs back then. I mean, this is all an inker should need now. You ask any of the professionals and we could all take this and ink it. Westerns, of course. Oh, and then Gil did it all. Look at that horse. Starhawks. The man did a freaking daily strip. Um, I've got a book that reprints some of them. I don't have them all reprinted. I've got so many books that I could just read every day and probably still not get through all the books I haven't read by the time I hit 75 years old. If all I did was read every day. One, slow reader. Two, I pour over the artwork. But three, I got a lot of books. Um, I'd like to get the whole Starhawks collection, but um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the small book I have. Once again, this is great because you can see his breakdowns, and I learned so much from studying how he breaks down a panel and a figure with this figure construction. Uh, Gil, you might not know, drew the first appearance of Donna Troy in her all-red costume. If I remember correctly, Teen Titans number 22, I think. It was inked by Nick Cardi, who was the main artist on Teen Titans. But Gil drew it. It was a backup story, I think. Beautiful job. Um, I have Gil Kane. I have a, a Gil Kane sketchbook that's bound. Uh, you know, it's just made from photocopies. And it was, uh, I, I bound it myself at a Kinko's with a ring binder but it's full of just this stuff. His figure construction. Look at this gorgeous figure construction. Like I say, this is, this is the nuts and bolts of it, guys, when it comes to drawing. So much to learn from it. Horses. Oh, he also, I don't know if they'll touch on it in here. He also drew Tarzan in the daily strip for a period of time. And when he was done, Mike Grell took over 
or vice versa. Oh my God, now I'm blanking. Either Grell did it and then Kane took over or Kane did it and then Grell took over. Anyhow, I've got the books that reprint the strips. Oh my God, Gil Kane drawing Tarzan, daily strip. I envy that man. Beautiful, I wish it wasn't in the center of a spread like that. Gil, of course, drew beautiful Superman covers, but of course, did draw full Superman issues. This is Gil inking himself. Like I said, I really love it when Gil inked himself. Uh, these were from Superman specials that Gil did. He did one special where he was fighting Shazam, which was fantastic. Um, he did a couple issues of Superman that Joe Rubenstein inked. And Joe is one of my favorite inkers. And the work that he did with Gil is phenomenal. Uh, this is a breakdown so above, original pencil layout for an interior page of Green Lantern 224. This was actually inked by Mark Farmer. Now, I'm pretty sure Gil did this and then traced it off to full pencils. Um, this is cool because they literally made a statue out of that figure, which I can show you guys right here. So it's hard to see, but... This is this is called from a cover run. They only did a few of these. They actually did one on Doug Monkey, a Superman figure as well, which I'd like to get. Um, talk about being able to study anatomy. This figure, and then look at that. You can throw them in nice perspective, you know, for the anatomy and the foreshortening. The face looks like Gill, so you can see it from all different angles. Beautiful figure. I highly recommend if you can get it to do it. Okay, back to the book. It's my ADHD. He drew some Micronauts, inked by Danny Bulanati, a uh, Filipino guy, very uh, Rudy Nebra's looking in his inks. He went and worked in animation, doing, uh, doing presentation drawings for animated cartoons. Uh, there's a Superman cartoon that came out that's collected on DVD that's got Gil Kane written all over it in regards to the style, the simplified style. I don't believe they show any of that here. Uh, some model sheets here for uh, a Killing Machine story. He did a book called The Edge with Stephen Grant. It was a superhero book. Uh, Gil did pencils and inks. I have a hardcover of it. I highly recommend. Um, this is from the ring of uh, Nibulung. Beautiful trade paperback. I really suggest you get if you're a Gil Kane fan. Um, he did a Superman book, all ink, Superman Shazam book, all inked by Kevin Nolan. Uh, it's a beautiful job. I own an original page of it as well. Uh, and here's that page. So I would recommend uh, checking that out. I was lucky I got that page for a song as well. Uh, this is for more animation, so it's nice and simple for design-wise. Uh, Gil even did some Jurassic Park covers. Oh, and here it is. This is uh, The Edge. It was a four-issue series. Um, I wish it would be reprinted in black and white. I, like I said, I've got it in full color. But Gil inked it himself. Just beautiful-looking stuff. Uh, this is the one, this is, uh, he did issues 28 and 29 of Green Lantern and the Atom, Legends of the DC Universe. Um, that's Gil painted over by Alex Ross, just beautiful stuff here. Uh, this is, because I don't remember this. Uh, oh, this is for Liefeld. Uh, this page showcases skill and choreography choreography and a classic western scene with the hero galloping away on his horse from judgment day for uh, rob Liefeld's awesome entertainment um i've got an issue with that that i think it's john sabal inked it just beautiful that nice clean crisp scott williams type inking style over gil kane it's gorgeous 
came out in the 90s, just really shows you that Gill would have fit right in over there at Image. This is from Black Marks. This is the epilogue. We're, we're getting to the end of the book here. Um, there's also another book that's out uh, that's all talking with Gill, basically interviews and stuff. Uh, Gill was very opinionated, very intelligent person. Um, so if you want to get more into the, the mindset of Gill on other things beside comics, uh, I, I highly recommend that book. Just Google search it. I'm sure you can find, you know, Google search and Gil Kane interviews and you can probably find it. Uh, these interior pages in the Western genre, which demonstrate the impeccable panel composition, Gil Kane pencils and inks. Doesn't say what they're from. Could be that Judgment Day stuff. This is from a cover of Captain Marvel. Like I said, November 69. Great month. Uh, love this issue. I think this is the last. Oh, no, it's not the last issue of Captain Marvel he did. Anyhow, just really wonderful cover. That's probably how tight his pencils were, like I said. God, just gorgeous horse construction. So well done. Yeah, Judgment Day. 1997. This issue I don't actually own because I own the one that he didn't ink. And that's it. Now this just goes through kind of like a glossary. Oh, look, there is some color stuff saved for last. Why you would print a book in all black and white and save color stuff for the end is beyond me because you're paying for full color. But okay, let's just look through some of it. Um, Green Lantern number one right here, guys. Like I said, if you uh, want to get me a copy, uh, I'd probably uh, give you a, a page or two of artwork for it. Just saying. Uh, Showcase 24. Another great cover right here. Green Lantern. Very rare close-up on a cover. Still very intriguing because it's like, ooh, what's going on? We got some nice interior work here. Can you believe that back in the day, the nickname for this Asian character... Uh, I'm trying to remember his real name before. Yeah, his name is Thomas. He's Asian. They called him Pie Face. Pie Face. Good Lord. I get a chuckle out of that. One of the early issues of Green Lantern here that uh, Gil inked himself. Uh, let's see. Above left. Gil, Green Lantern number 55. Uh, Gil did pencils and inks on number 55. Beautiful. You can see his inking style coming into play there. Thunder Agents. I mean, the man, his output was just amazing. Amazing Spider-Man. Avengers. Gil Kane Savage. This is the black mark that I own right here. And this is the Starhawks book that I own. So would you look at that? I do not own Savage. I'll have to look for that. More covers that he did. The guy did just so many covers. Ah, the Superman stuff. So Micronauts, very cool. I don't own a lot of these. I should get them. P. Craig Russell inking Gill on, um, uh, I'm trying to see real quick. Uh, the Jungle Book adaptation was really glorious. P. Craig Russell's inks, once again, very, uh, very stylized, but you can see Gill, Superman, some of my favorite stuff. Uh, Superman 377, beautiful cover. He did not draw the inside. This is a great issue of uh, Green Lantern right here. However, I believe it's an Alex Toth inside, ink by Terry Austin. Highly recommend. Uh, this Sword of the Atom was cool because he got to mix superhero and kind of barbarian type stuff. He shrank down so small that there was just this whole other world that he was in. Oh, yeah, two issues of The Dark Knight, Legends of the Dark Knight. Seeing Gil draw Batman, he inked those himself. This is from The Edge, like I was talking about. These are the Judgment Day books right here. Oh, I'm glad they show it. The other cover in full color. This is Alex Ross, once again, painting over Gil. Love that. You can see Gil, but you can totally see Alex. Here's an interior page. Like I said, beautiful Klaus Janssen inks. And uh, this is inked by Kevin Nolan. I just recently picked that up for the cover. 
Oh, and here's a nice checklist. So this is cool. I'm going to have to look at this checklist for, uh, for stuff. I'm curious if it goes all the way up to the awesome stuff he did. I would think it does because this book does. So let's just see. Uh, Doomsday Annual number one, assuming it's a pinup. I mean, Action 715. Pencils and inks. So this doesn't say. Four pages of pencils, five pages, six pages. This doesn't say. I, so maybe that means the whole book? I don't know. Uh, 97 Lightning Comics Judgment Day Stormwatch 44 pages I don't I don't I'll have to look I'm not sure what that means Judgment Day Aftermath Yeah I'll have to I'll have to do a, a more of a deep dive then a little interview here with Gil So I mean this book is just I can't say enough about it um, Howard Chaikin actually was a assistant to Gil. So, and more of his gorgeous layouts here. Look at that. From 224, these issues were inked by Mark Farmer. A beautiful figure construction. So, I mean, if you're a Gil Kane fan, go check this out. I will uh, see if this book is still available. Post the link below if it is. If there's no link, it's not available anymore. Thank you for joining me. I know this was a long one, but I love Gil Kane. I just get so excited. Uh, thank you for joining me on these book looks. We'll do another one next week. Go check out Core Draft The Reckoning. Link in the description below. I'm on page 67 out of 76. We're getting towards the finish line, guys. All right. Catch you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>